What if you were given a clean sheet of paper on which to design your dream driving machine? What would it look like? In the case of Sydney-based brothers Nick and Peter Papp, the answer is this. It's called the Spartan, and it's a mid-engine, carbon-bodied track day special that weighs less than an S1 Elise, looks like a Can-Am Lola Spider, revs to 8,500 RPM, has three pedals, and in terms of power to weight ratio would have something like the latest Porsche 911 GT3 RS running for cover. Customer cars will soon be imported to the UK by Le Mans Coupés in West Sussex, but we've had an early go in this late stage prototype and at a thankfully sunny Anglesey circuit. So, after a few laps to acclimatise to its bare bones cockpit and to warm up those hardcore tyres, what does this borderline unhinged Aussie built lightweight really feel like to drive? So, on these semi-slick tyres, you've got to be quite patient. And we've got no ABS, no ESP, no TC, none of that. It's all about purity, this car. So time to pay it down. Just how it feels when you got the bit between your teeth. Bloody hell! When they were running this K24 unit as a naturally aspirated engine, they had a they had a mongrel gearbox made up upon the parts. And on they supercharged the engine, and it was just jumping through the ratios in no time at all. So we've had to go back to the drawing board and rework this gearbox. So it's well matched to an engine with such an incredibly broad power band and such a ridiculously fruity top band. So loud and so visceral is the Spartan that things are going to get quite shouty, so let's talk about the engine now. It's a 2.4 litre Honda K series, but almost everything has been strengthened. And while the Spartan will be offered in 275 brake horsepower naturally aspirated form, this one has a Rotrex supercharger that takes output to 460, which given the car weighs only 700 kilos, results in a supercar baiting turn of pace in any gear. It all runs through a six speed gearbox and a quaff differential. Naturally, steering is unassisted, while the double wishbone suspension is controlled by some very clever tractive dampers, and it's all hung off the car's space frame. <laughs> It's a lovely box as well. Light, accurate. I don't want a gearbox that just punishes me. If I don't get this one, it's perfect. And this one doesn't. God, the response of that engine pack. And the throttle calibration is just absolutely lovely. Excellent. Just like an Atmo engine, which is what you'd expect. Linear delivery, listen to that! Come down the box. Pedals are set up really nicely for heel and toe work. It's just an intuitive car to drive. Steering, pitch up, both axles acting as one hockey day car into the back. Your entry point, bleed off the brakes, and then bang, you're in. Really, really lovely. I've got to say, in terms of personality, this car is already starting to feel quite a lot like the love child of an era It's got that kind of atom like agility, a balance. Fantastic mid-engine, natural agility, mobility, and stability to be trail braked in really quite aggressively. It's on your side. That great step is a lovely bit of kit as well. Get the car in. And you just wait for it to rock up. That's a lovely push. It's a really lovely. 
She left them in their road setting. They simply don't need to be any firmer. Cars go on lovely fluidity. Out of the way. It's just happy to move around, communicate with you through this quave rack as well, which is so beautifully sped. It's so light, so feel so really transparent. What's so surprising about this car is how quickly you can get on first name terms with it. And how much confidence it gives you straight out of the box. I think mean, yeah, something like an area it takes longer to build up to. And a caterum isn't quite so hair trigger and wild. <laughs> loud though. So apologies for the shouting, I can hardly hear myself speak. Who would have thought that a K24 in an Accord in 2005 could be turned into such an absolute monster for that beefcake. Broad. Mid-range with the intake roll. And then you ring it out, and you ring it out, and you ring it out, and you ring it out. Wow! What a machine! I mean, if you want to go to track days and take apart modern supercars, look no further. I mean, this is what? 460 horsepower versus 700 kilos. It's got a power to weight ratio where it makes a mockery of even something like a Ferrari 296 a really frighteningly fast car. This car is just as fast, but it's not frightening. You've got to hand it to the paps. I mean, I could drive this thing all day as well. I mean, it's deafeningly loud. It's deafeningly loud. But it's absolutely brilliant. My God, I'll come in now. Could stay out forever. The head says yes, the heart says yes, but the ears and the relatively small 30 litre fuel tank say no. Boy oh boy, what a toy. What a toy. The idea behind this car is something that's thrilling but fun, and boy does it deliver. The Paps have found a sweet spot between seriousness and playfulness, and it's a rewarding sweet spot because you still need quite a bit of commitment to get under the Spartan skin. Basically, it doesn't make things too easy, and there's even more potential in this package than we've experienced here. The Aero has been developed by an XF1 designer, and if you really wanted to unleash the Spartan's potential as a time attack car, 800 kilos of downforce is achievable. Likewise, the suspension, it's fully adjustable, and it's been developed with some of Yokohama's most prized tyre testers. You can tweak and tinker endlessly, and then drive home, because in the UK at least, the Spartan will be road legal. £105,000 before that. Yeah, expensive. But perhaps worth it for something so nicely conceived, that's so dynamically versatile in the context of track day cards. And of course, that makes you feel like a Can-Am hero. 